Hello. Today we're going to be talking about Vampire the Dark Ages, not Dark Ages Vampire, which is the one that comes after this. So, first a little bit about the time frame of this. This book is the one for second edition Vampire the Masquerade, not the revised edition. So keep that in mind when this is reviewed. Honestly, what I do is I just plan to run this as a primary like um, setting book with anything that is inconsistent with um, revised edition. I'm just gonna you know use revised rules with this as the dressing of it. One should say, mainly because this is like ten fifteen dollars. Dark Ages Vampires like fifty. So, you know, for those of you who want to do that, I recommend that. But, um, let's get started. This book is set in, I believe, 1,100 and... I think it's... I think it's... I want to say 1182 AD. I want to say something like that. But, um... Right off the bat, in this book, it starts with, you know, their fiction, you know, their, their little story that they always tell right before they start a book. It's alright, it's long. It's one of the longer ones I've found. Um, it's not necessarily bad, but, uh, unless one of these like, really grab my attention right off the bat, I just kind of glaze on through, especially the vampire ones. I found the vampire ones are, like, really cool the first time you read them. But then after that, they seem very, very similar to the one other one, so I just kind of passed on through it. But um, then we break into the introduction, which covers your basic what everything is. Coterie, storytellers, uh, hunger, what you do to LARP. Um, then we go into how the society is, which notes a couple of key points. The fact that Canites are not so prominent in number as they are in the modern night. So you've got to keep that in mind when you're setting your game. Because they state that most areas, they'd only have like five vampires. Whereas like big cities like Constantinople, I think has 300? 400? I mean, it's very, very little in comparison to how many would be in a modern city like New York. Or something like that. But... We break into lexicon. Uh, I think this is a little. I think this is the blurb about. Uh, yeah, this is the. There's a little blurb about how canines would really have to use their power to, uh, you know, deal with it. Like, well, there's no masquerade. You know, in theory, you could just massacre an entire village and no one would ever know that you were there. But at the same time, you know. It's more prominent for vampire hunters to hunt you down because they believe you exist. So they note that we get into how to use this book, a couple of movies and resources, which I always liked that White Wolf did that, was kind of note things you could go to kind of get a feel for how they designed this game. But we get into how the modern, I mean, this works. Medieval world, private wars, uh... Generations broken down. I believe everyone starts in this one as a 10th generation. Yeah. Yeah, 10th and 11th generation are the starting generation for this one. It goes into the Prince, which is different because there is no Camarilla and Sabat yet. It's kind of just King Knights for all for themselves. Whoever is most powerful in a city tends to be the Prince of the city. So, that's really how they broke it down there. Fealty, ghouls, domain. Now, without the Camarilla, they had to figure out some way, as they always have in at least White Wolf games that I've seen, a rule system, a structure that you had to abide by. In Werewolf, it was the Litany. In Vampire Modern Masquerade, it was the Masquerade. And I believe in Demon the Fallen, they had one. I think, I want to say they had one, but I can't remember. Or maybe their just torment was just so crazy that you had to abide by it. But they have the traditions here, which are supposedly the teachings of Cain. And 
they're almost identical to the Masquerade. So, people who've played the Masquerade won't have too much trouble figuring out what the tradition is. And I believe they're actually still in the same order, too. But, uh, then we get it broken down to organizations, sects. We have the, I'm probably going to butcher this name, the Inconu, which are the remnants of the Roman era Canites. The Fiores, which are uh, outlaws of Canites. The Bit Order of the Bitter Ash, which got a lot of books devoted to them. Octarchus. Oct uh, just a whole bunch of things. Uh, we get how they do Elysiums, Labyrinths, Blood Hunts, Ordeals. I mean, I'm not going to go into all this, otherwise this video would get very, very long. But it really breaks down how things work, how nobles interact with vampires, how vampires interact with nobles. It does note, you know, what might happen if, say, a there's a peasant who is, you know, a uh, sixth generation. I'm just throwing one out. I'm not a huge vampire player, but like a sixth generation vampire, you know, really high up in the hierarchy. But then there's like an eighth generation, you know, baron. What would happen if those two interact on the streets? So, so you know, it, it does touch on that. So, I, when I was actually reading it, I was thinking that. I was like, but what happens if, you know, different hierarchies? And they actually did touch on it, so I was pretty I was pretty happy about seeing that. Goes into orders, mortal orders at the time, like the Knight Templar, how they interact. And then it goes into the clans. Noting all 13 clans, I believe it is. But, you know, they get the followers of Set. They get all of the La Sombra, the Gangrel, the Bruja, everything. And it touches on all of uh, the stereotypes that they normally do. Then they have this section after the clans, which goes into how the organization actually structure of the clans and how they work, what they're currently involved in at the time period that this book is set. So you get a little bit of information on all of them and their influences. Then we move into your stereotypical character creation set, which is the exact same as Masquerade, with only a few differences. Let me flip to them. First is virtues. Virtues are um, like your courage, your self-instinct, your conscience, your conviction, your instinct, and your self-control. Those things are, you know, when you see fire, but you roll courage, you know. When you see conviction is, I believe that is, so that you don't fall further down your road, which I'll get to touch on in a moment. And self-control or instinct for feeding. And, uh, you know, th those are all, they just, you know, simply, they show you what you're going to have to roll. So it makes it really easy to be like, okay, open flame, courage, blah, 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 blah. So you don't have to kind of make up a stat or whatever. Next is the road, which I touched on. The road is your vampire's view on morality, like how how he really views him being a canine and everything. I believe there's seven roads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's close. And there, the road of the beast. Um, so that one's where in each if you if you fall all the way down your road to you know you know on the ranking scale, you succumb to the beast. You know. You've gone crazy, whatever. The road of the beast is the entire thing is you feed on the beast and it will it won't break its chain. So that's that one. Uh, vampiric blood grants the power for revenge. Uh, chivalry treat your equals with honor and get better with res and you get your betters get respect. Road of the devil, we are created evil and must play our part. Road of heaven, God made us vampires to exact His wrath. Humanity, the struggle to maintain one's humanity. Kind of self toy. Uh, the paradox, existence is a lie, change reality for the better. That sounds like a Malkavian. And the road of Typhon. Sin and corruption are the keys to understanding. So, I mean, then we get the breakdown character creation. Your, uh, uh, nature, demeanor, things like that. I believe all of those are the same as before with a couple of things 
you know, setting computer use doesn't, you know, work, so they switched out with something else. And, uh, the, um, disciplines, that's what they're called. The disciplines, they go up to, uh, six dots in this book. So you get to see, you know, you get, a, that gives you a fairly, you know, higher level of play. And it details all of them. Fortitude, all those gifts. I'm trying to get to an area that's not already in Masquerade because the rules are fairly boring. Because I mean, all the rules, all the uh, for all the, for those who do have not actually played Vampire the Masquerade, the rules are very very similar to Werewolf the Apocalypse, Werewolf the Wild West, Demon the Fallen. Which two of those I reviewed, Werewolf and Demon. The rules are very, very similar. The character creation steps almost identical. So I'm not going to go over them again. <laughs> Blood Oath, Dramatic System, Rules. Oh, here's something. Something I like to note is the comics in these books. Particularly, I saw them in Werewolf and this. And you get these. So on this side you see a comic you see a scene play out you know with a narration essentially this is what you would perceive this is how the you know storyteller describes it over here on this faded one it then takes the exact same pain and then details the rules that would go into that scene so you really begin to see how these rules and mechanics build a scene so i really really like seeing that it really you know, I showed it to a couple people, and I was like, this is really how you see it. And they're like, okay, that makes a lot of sense now. So it, it really helps for explaining. Plus, there are, they're pretty cool to read. It's storytelling. Then we get antagonists. We get examples of religious orders, exorcists, blessed items, how they work, true faith, some cool artwork. Inquisitors, I mean, we get to see how... Everything works. Canite antagonist, the Bali, gargoyles, werewolves. Then it breaks down the tribes that exist, which I'll go real fast. All, uh, uh, yeah, thirteen tribe of the thirteen tribes, only a few were represented in medieval Europe. Uh, Theana, the Geta Fenris, Silverfang, Bonar, Shadow Lords, Red Talons, Black Spiral Dancers. That's it. So that you know you. In theory, if you wanted to, if you worked really hard at it, you could play Werewolf the Apocalypse in Vampire the Dark Ages. Do not get tricked, though, into the um, Vampire the Dark Ages Werewolves, I think it's called. It makes you think that it's Werewolf, but I found out that it is not actually the Werewolf rules in vamp in Dark Ages. It is the Vampire rules. It's trying to like m combine them, kind of. I'm phrasing it really badly. But uh, it's when they take Werewolf and try and make it fit in the vampire slot, essentially. Wouldn't work. So, if you just worked at it, you could easily do it. But, um, goes into templates, that's still Werewolf. Goes into, get some, it gets some stats. And uh, it breaks them down with using disciplines and blood pool in place of gnosis and gifts. So... We get Magi, Infernalism, Wraiths in Dark Ages, uh, uh, Fairies, the Fae, so you can play them. We got a whole bunch of blurs about Changeling, Changeling the Dreaming the Medieval Age, Drinking Fairy Blood, Crossover Rules for Demon the Fallen? Yes, that's what it looks like. It appears like that is crossover rules for Demon the Fallen. I've never actually seen them recognize Demon the Fallen. I've never seen them actually like put rules in it for it. So that's, that's pretty cool. I like that. Then we get an appendix, which I like this. Because this is not the revised edition, and I had the second edition vampire book. This one actually has the merits and flaws in it, which they didn't put in initially in revised edition, in second edition. So I like to see it in here. And there's a couple of uh, alterations to make them, uh, you know, pertinent to this time period. 
additional backgrounds, one. Then we get an equipment list from armor, you know, bows, swords, everything like that. And then that's it. So ultimately, I like this product, especially because if you get this and Vampire the Masquerade, the revised edition, to make note, you would spend about $30, I want to say, maybe. If you already have that, you can just buy this. Whereas if you were to try and buy Dark Ages Vampire, which is the revised rules in this book, you would have to pay a lot. A lot more, actually, for the combined cost of these two. I think like 10 bucks more. But So ultimately, I think it's a good book if you're willing to run in the Dark Ages for Vampire or really anything. This is a really good source book for it. So that's all I got to say. Oh, by the way, for those who really like World of Darkness and Old World of Darkness in particular, the site Drive Through RPG is now being playing host to White Wolf's publishing. So White Wolf is in the process of putting all of their old stuff in print on demand, so you can get you know Vampire, Werewolf. Uh, they just released Demon the Fallen and three of its books and some of Hunter the Reckoning's books on print on demand. So if you're interested, link down below. But until next time, have a good one.